three, and again, it's still all being divided by each. Okay, so here I see a couple of fractions. A lot of times with a fraction, a good trick is to get common denominators. So if I get common denominators, 3 plus h here and a 3 here, I'll multiply top and bottom of this one by 3. So I'll get 3 over, and I'm not even going to multiply it out. Minus, now there's a 3 plus h here, I'll multiply top and bottom by 3 plus h. Over 3 times 3 plus h. Again, my divided by h is still hanging out there. It hasn't happened to him yet. And now, okay, we've got common denominators in the numerator. Again, here's my big divided by h on the bottom. I've got this common denom denominator of 3 times 3 plus h. And I'll just simplify the numerator of this fraction. Okay, and recall that I'm going to have to distribute the negative sign, so 3 minus 3 will be 0. But then I'll pick up a negative h term in the numerator. Okay, so I'm getting a little closer. I still can't substitute in h equals 0, though, because I'm still going to be divided by 0. We can think about h, though, as being h over 1. And now I have a fraction divided by a fraction. So to simplify this down, I'm just going to flip my bottom fraction over. I'm going to flip the bottom fraction over and multiply. So let's see here. So now we have the limit as h approaches 0. I've got negative h over 3 times 3 plus h in the numerator. I'm going to flip and multiply by 1 over h. Again, I'm flipping this part. The h is now cancel. So I'm going to simplify it. I've got a negative 1 on top. I have 3 times 3 plus h in the bottom. And now, again, I've got some algebra. I'm going to go back to my plug and chug method. If I substitute in h equals 0, notice in this case I'm no longer dividing by 0. I end up getting negative 1 over 9 when I simplify. And again, that's my solution. So a lot of times if you have fractions floating around, as we did in this example, simply get common denominators, be careful with your algebra as you go along, cancel things out, and then just go back to this idea of plugging things in. So here's another limit problem. Again, the first thing I'm going to try to do is plug in h equals 0 into this problem. If I plug in h equals 0, notice I'll get 3 plus 0. So I'll have 3 to the negative first, minus 3 to the negative first, over 0. And again, this turns into 0 over 0. So we're going to have to be a little more clever on how we do this one. Now, I see these negative exponents floating around. And remember, you can make negative exponents positive by putting them on the other side of the fraction. But here we have to be real careful because if things are separated by pluses or minuses, you can't just move it to the bottom and move this other one to the bottom. That's not algebraically correct. What I can do, however, is I can think about 3 plus h to the negative 1 and being over 1. 3 to the negative 1 over 1. And that's all being divided by h. So here's my original h is hanging out at the bottom. And now I can move them to the bottom of their respective fractions. So the limit as h approaches 0. And I don't see people leaving off the limit. You have to have that in there or it's no longer equal to what we're writing. So I'll move this one to the denominator. I'm just moving it down here. So it'll become 3 plus h to the positive first. So I'm just going to get rid of the parentheses. Minus 1 over 3. And again, that's still all being divided by h. Okay, so here I see a couple of fractions. A lot of times with a fraction, a good trick is to get common denominators. So if I get common denominators, the 3 plus h here and a 3 here, I'll multiply top and bottom of this one by 3. So I'll get 3 over, and I'm not even going to multiply it out. 